Hello, welcome to Einstein's Mechanics. In today's episode, we are going to look at Thevenin's theorem. One of the theorems that help us to find currents and voltages within a circuit. So, the Thevenin's theorem. I'm not going to state the theorem, but I'm going to explain to you in order how to find a current through any active element. So, in Thevenin's theorem, what we are interested in is what we call the VTH, and this is what we call the Thevenin's voltage. So, anytime you see VTH, we are talking about Thevenin's voltage. We also have RTH, and this is the Thevenin's resistance. The Thevenin's resistance and we are also going to talk about the rl where this is called the load resistance so pay attention it's very simple to use the thevenin's theorem what we are interested in is this vth the rth and the rl so in any given question where you are to use thevenin's theorem to find current you are going to focus on these three parameters and how do they work always we are going to find a circuit where all these three these three elements are going to be in series with each other so we are going to combine the voltage source which is the turbulence voltage Let's have our voltage, assuming this is the Thevenin's voltage, we are going to have it in series with the Thevenin's resistance and it is also going to be in series with the load resistance, this way. So always this is what we are going to have for the Thevenin's approach. So this is the VTH, this is our RTH and this is our RL. What it means is our RL, which is the load resistance, in the question we are going to be asked to find current through a particular resistance. And that resistance will be the load resistance. And the Thevenin's resistance is going to be the total resistance in the circuit after we have taken out the load resistance. And so the Thevenin's voltage is also going to be the voltage measured along the terminals of the load resistor. You will get to know how and the approach in finding each of the parameters. RL is always known. It will be always known because the question is going to ask us. Let's take note of some terms we are going to use. We are going to use what we call short circuit and we are also going to use what we call open circuit. So in a situation where we want to short circuit, that is going to be for a voltage source. So when we are talking about short circuit, meaning that parameter or that element is a voltage source. If we talk about open circuit, then it is going to be what? A current source. And we will see how best we will apply all this in our analysis. So, for example, let's have, let's say this is our circuit. Let's have one circuit here. This is a circuit, and this is our voltage source. This is another resistor. So, let's call this resistor one resistor 2, resistor 3, and resistor 4. This is our voltage source. Let's call it a V1. So what Thevenin's theorem is going to do is it is going to ask us to find current through one of the resistors. A particular resistor is going to be mentioned. So say find the current in R4. So now, our load resistor becomes what the R4 because it is the resistor we are to determine current through it. Are you okay? And our RTH, RTH is going to be 
the total resistance in the circuit after we take the load resistor out. And this is how we are going to do it. In finding the RTH, we are going to short circuit the voltage source. So this is going to be the diagram. Short circuit means it is going to be out. We assume there is no voltage source over there. So this will be the diagram. This is it. And this is for resistor 3. And we are going to take the load resistor out. So this is our diagram. This is resistor 1, resistor 2, and resistor 3. So here will be our RTH, where we're taking out the load resistor. So now the RTH is going to be finding the total resistance for these three resistors. Are we okay? So these three resistors, we can see that R1 and R2 can be what? Parallel. So R1 is parallel to R2. And now the combination of R1 and R2 is going to be in series with what? R3. And that is going to give us our RTH. Are you okay? So now that we have our RTH, we will also move to a step to find the VTH. And the VTH is also going to be very simple. So let's take an example and get to it button. See how we can solve this particular question. So basically, this is just the basis, the three things you will need for Thevenin's theorem, how you will go by it. Let's take an example. So using Thevenin's theorem, find the current in the 4 ohm resistor. So as I already said, there's always the load resistor given or the resistance of the load resistor will always be given. So here we know that in Thevenin's theorem, we are looking for VTH. We are also looking for RTH and RL such that we will combine the three in a series what arrangement and from the question our load resistance is going to be for the 4 ohm resistor are we okay so now we are to determine for the rth and also the vth let's look at how we can do it let's start with the rth so before we find the total resistance by taking off the load resistor. This is what we are going to do. And in such instance, we are going to short circuit the voltage source. Here, there's no current source, so there's no open circuit. So let's look at this. Short circuit the voltage source. We have two voltage sources here, and we also have one over there. So this voltage source is what? 32, 32 volts. So this is the diagram for RTH. We are finding the RTH. The voltage source is going to go out. This is the 2 ohm resistor. We have our 8 ohm resistor. And this is the load resistor where we are finding the RTH. This voltage source is also going to be short circuit, meaning it is not there. So this is what we have. And this is our RTH. We have this to be 2 ohms and this is our 8 ohms. So now we have two resistors to find the RTH. How do we do it? We can see that if current is flowing from the 2 ohm resistor, it is going to split somewhere here and there. So meaning 2 ohm resistor is in parallel to or is parallel to the 8 ohm resistor. So what we are using here is our RTH is going to be for parallel resistors. The 2 ohm, this is going to be the total resistance. That will be 2 multiplying the 8 on 2 plus the 8. And this is going to give us 1.6 ohm for the total resistance. Now we have the total resistance. We only need the VTH. So here we are done with the RTH. We are to find the VTH. The VTH, which is the Thevenin's voltage, is very crucial. So here 
you are going to look at how we can do it. We will draw the diagram again, but here with all the sources included. So this is our diagram. Again, this is our voltage source. This is our 2 ohm resistor. The 8 is also here. And this is what we are interested in, the load resistor. So this is where we are going to measure our BTH. So here we have our 20. And this becomes our circuit. So I'll measure the VTH here. The VTH. So both VTH and RTH are going to be measured at the load resistance, where the load resistor is. So you can see that the RTH is at the place of the 4 ohms. The VTH is also at the place of the 4 ohms. This is 32. This is 2 ohms. This is 8 ohms and this is 20 volts. So in order to determine VTH, first we can use this approach. Say if a current is from this source, this is the positive side. So a current I is from this source. This current is going to pass through. The same current is going to pass through the 8 because when you look at the VTH, there is an open circuit. So many currents cannot flow through this direction. Do you see that? So all the currents I is still going to pass through the 8 ohm resistor. So what we have to do here is consider the loops. We have loop 1, loop 2. So from our loop 1, we can do the analysis using KVL. That's the voltage draw across the resistor 2 ohm and the 8 ohm will be equal to the voltage source. I hope we remember our KVL. So that is going to be 32, which is the total voltage source, is going to be equal to the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor. And that is going to be 2 multiplying the current I plus the voltage drop across the 8. And that is going to be 8 multiplying the same current passing through. If we had not open circuit this part, the VTH part, then there will be a current flowing through. But here it is open, so all the current is passing through the 8. So that is going to be 8 multiplying the I. And with this, we are going to get our 32 should be equal to 2I plus 8I. So we make I the subject, which implies that our I is equal to 32 on 10. Are we okay? So here I can be equal to 3.2 amperes. So we have the current flowing through. Now we can also find VTH. Look, our interest is in VTH, not the current, but the current is going to help us to get the VTH. When we consider loop two, so here is from loop one, we consider loop two, Loop 2, 2, we are going to find what is happening. Can we say that in loop 2, the voltage drop across the VTH, which is the voltage, and the voltage drop across the A should be also equal to the 20 volt. Yes, that is true. So we are going to say the 20 volt is equal to voltage drop across the A, which is still 8, multiplied by the current I passing through, plus the voltage drop at the load resistor, and we call that voltage VTH. So this, we already have our I, we put in the value of I, so this is 28 multiplying I, which is 3.2 plus our VTH. So we can make VTH the subject here, and that is going to be equal to 20 minus 8 by 3.2. And our VTH is going to be negative 5.6 volts. The negative means the direction of the VTH that I chose is in the opposite direction, but it is being measured to be 5.6. Are you okay? So now looking at the parameters, we have obtained our load resistance, which is 4 ohms from the question. 
we have obtained the RTH, which is the Thevenin's resistance, which is 1.6, and we have also obtained the VTH. You have to pay attention to finding the VTH. It is where the problems lies. But for the RTH, it is always finding the total resistance for resistors, and that is quite easy. So for the VTH, you can either use the NUDA analysis, the mesh analysis, branch analysis to find the value of what? The VTH. Are we okay? So now we have to combine these three parameters that we've gotten into a single circuit. And they will be in series with each other. So let's draw the circuit and look at how best we can solve the problem. So now I'm going to combine them. This voltage source is going to be the VTH. This is going to be my Thevenin's resistance. And this is going to be my load resistance. And they are all in series. So this is my RTH. This is my RL. And this is my VTH. Are we okay? So we have the value for each of them. This is 4 ohms. This is 1.6. And the VTH is negative 5.6 volts so here we have to find the current passing through the 4 ohm and the 4 ohm is the load so if a current is from the vth let's call it i1 this current is going to pass through the rth and the rl they are in series so meaning from ohm's law where i is equal to v on r then my i1 which is the same current passing through the load current and the rth is going to be VTH on the total resistance. This is in series, so we are going to add RTH plus the RL, and this is going to be I1, negative 5.6 on RTH, which is 1.6, plus the load resistor, which is also going to be 4. And with this, our I1 is going to give us a current of negative 1. Ampers. So the negative one also signifies the direction tossing because the voltage we got was negative, we are getting the negative current. But if you use the right approach or the right direction, you are going to get positive one ohms. But you are right for any of the approach. So we have it as negative one ampers. So with this, we are done with the first example under the Thevenin's theorem. The next episode, we have two examples solved under the Thevenin's theorem. We are going to also explain more complex ways. Thank you for watching this episode. Subscribe to the channel, like, and share the video. Thank you.